For 10 years, every Darwin dry season has brought another rotation of US Marines. To begin with, there were just 200 American personnel based in the top end. At its peak before the pandemic, that figure had ballooned to 2,500. While COVID has restricted the last two deployments, plans for bigger, more capable rotations are in the works. More than a decade on from then US President Barack Obama's historic visit to Darwin, reporter Melissa McKay takes a look at 10 years of the American military's presence in the top end and what to expect next. On a blazing hot mock battlefield 600 kilometres from Darwin, 2,000 American Marines and their Australian counterparts mark the culmination of a decade-long partnership. Carrying out the most intense war games the Allies have seen in the Northern Territory. So realistic, the Darwin commander of the Marine Rotational Force would be confident should they be sent into combat. There's no doubt that we would be able to do it regardless. But I think what we were able to do this year allows us to do it more efficiently. Exercise Dong usually marks the end of the annual rotation of US Marines. But in 2021, the war games coincided with a major shift in the alliance. While these men and women were training in the top end, Australia's longest war was coming to a spectacular conclusion and world leaders creating a contemporary coalition focusing on the Indo-Pacific region. Just as 10 years ago it was a force for stability um, in the Indo-Pacific, so too is it um, a force for stability in a different strategic context. And I think that strategic context is recognised in the AUKUS arrangement and I think Murph d will morph and um, support this sort of new realisation of just how important our alliance is and then bringing in, of course, the UK. It's a bittersweet irony, the city that birthed the US-Australia alliance in the Second World War, becoming the home base for the Marine Rotational Force Darwin a decade ago. All of you are the backbone of our alliance. It's an honour to be here with Australia's legendary diggers. The United States Marines quickly becoming synonymous with Darwin's dry season. The first rotation of 200 men and women surged in a pre-pandemic world to two and a half thousand. The return on investment that both of our countries make in sending military representatives to each other's educational institutions, it's an investment in an uncertain future. And you can never tell when the situation is going to call for that kind of close, connective, you know, personal connection. And uh, you just, because you can't plan for it, you better prepare for it. And personal connections they've made regularly, lending a hand to their host community when Darwin needs it most. The Marine Rotational Force Darwin, affectionately known as the Murph D, is unsurprisingly a popular deployment among young Marines. There's no language barrier. Well, there's a little bit of a language barrier, um, but you know, certainly uh, both speak in English or our approximation of it. Um, and so I think Marines really enjoy that. With the promise of thousands of extra personnel in the top end a decade ago came the promise of billions of dollars for the local economy. Experts say the United States Marines are spending less in pubs and clubs now than they were 10 years ago, but major contracts for local businesses working to support the deployment are finally flowing. So, you know, there's a lot of catering required. There are um, transport and logistics requirements, fuel deliveries, um, emptying toilets, you name it, there's quite a, a few things that need to be done on site to support both the Australian and, and US Defence Forces. The US government says it's spending around $2 billion on investments on major projects in the Northern Territory, including two fuel storage facilities near Darwin. While the Australian government this year announced more than $700 million in upgrades as part of an $8 billion spend. Also in the works we have a, a major upgrade to Robertson Barracks and that will look at increasing the capacity of the facilities there 
uh, to help host our, our US partners from the uh, Marine Rotational Force. Um, that project's yet to go to government or parliament for approval, just in the development phase at the moment. The United States has spent decades working on dispersing its military across the globe, with bases in places like Japan, Guam and Hawaii. With Darwin's proximity to the Indo-Pacific, it's unsurprising the United States has its eye on North Australia. But the problem with those large concentrations is that they're also places that you would target during a conflict, particularly if you're a major power like China, which has the capability to do that. But experts say hosting the Marines doesn't necessarily put Darwin at greater risk of becoming a target. I don't think it brings a new risk, but it does bring a new power to deter conflict in our region. All you need to do is look at um, the Pacific Theatre during World War II. You take those same maps and you overlay it with a map showing um, modern weapons capabilities and um, the threat environment of today. And you'll see that there's remarkable similarities, but it's just that much more important to have things forward deployed in areas where it makes strategic sense uh, for the United States, but also for Australia's uh, defence. The controversial lease of Darwin Port, apparently not a constraint on America's activities. This is something that I know Australia is taking a very hard look at. Ultimately, it's a sovereign decision for Australia to make, but um, we're certainly not deterred in our cooperation with Australia. While leaders wouldn't be drawn on possible plans for a more permanent American military fixture in the Northern Territory, there are still 15 years left on the Marine Rotation Agreement. I can see it only getting bigger, more integrated, more ambitious and, and better in the future. A stable ally in an unstable world. Melissa McKay, ABC News.